Can Warner Brothers save the Lord of the Rings? It's been 9 years since the Battle of the Five Armies came out, and it's been 20 years since the debut of The Return of the King. Now originally, I was pretty excited for The Rings of Power, like many people were, but it was honestly very, very disappointing. And so lately I've been finding it very difficult to find any excitement for any Tolkien adaptation news, but there may be some light. The animated movie, The War of the Rohirrim, is slated for 2024, and and it's set nearly 200 years before the events in the original trilogy. And it's basically going to show us how Helm's Deep got the name. I'm feeling cautiously optimistic about it, and I'll talk about it more later in the video. But now, Warner Brothers and New Line Cinema have struck a deal with Embracer Group, who owns, um, who now owns Middle Earth Enterprises, to make more movies set in the world of Middle Earth. In fact, they now have the rights to movies, video games, merch, uh, theme parks, and live shows, while Amazon still holds limited television rights. Now, I wanted to quickly cover this news and give some of my thoughts, and also go into some speculation as to what stories in Middle Earth I think they could be adapting. But I want to hear from you guys in the comments as well. Let me know what you think about this news. Are you excited? Are you feeling optimistic? Or do you still feel jaded from The Rings of Power? Which is understandable. Let me know in the comments. Now, ever since this news dropped, I've seen a lot of people, even articles, saying that they're remaking the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but nowhere is this indicated whatsoever. In fact, they confirm that they're not remaking the trilogy. The CEO of Embracer Group has mentioned he knows how cherished these works are, and the studios plan to honor the past, look to the future, and adhere to the strongest level of quality and production values. Which, yes please, That's that sounds great, that sounds like what all fans would like to hear. Now two of the co-chairs and CEOs at Warner Brothers has said that 20 years ago, New Line took an unprecedented leap of faith to realize the incredible stories, characters, and world of the Lord of the Rings on the big screen. The result was a landmark series of films that have been embraced by generations of fans. But for all the scope and detail lovingly packed into the two trilogies, the vast, complex, and dazzling universe dreamed up by J.R.R. Tolkien remains largely unexplored on film. The opportunity to invite fans deeper into the cinematic world of Middle-earth is an honor. This confirms they're diving deeper into the world and not just remaking the trilogy. What exactly these new films are going to be adapting is unclear as of yet, but I should note that the unfinished tales, The Silmarillion, and the other First Age books by Tolkien still belong to the Tolkien estate, so we're likely not going going to see anything from those unless they're able to negotiate and strike some sort of deal. I think it's fair to say that many fans aren't as hyped anymore and are very, very cautious. I mean, The Rings of Power, I'm not going to say was an outright terrible show, but it had a lot of flaws. It had some very poorly written dialogue, poor pacing, and it even made a lot of lore mistakes as well. Not to mention the Mordor reveal, I'm still not over that. What was that? Honestly, hiring first-time showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay was not a smart move. Their lack of experience was definitely noticeable. And, I mean, Amazon pretty much ghosted Peter Jackson and they didn't get him on as a showrunner or even a consultant. Why a new show would actively avoid someone with so much expertise and experience and success is truly baffling. But the good news is that Peter Jackson has said that Warner Brothers and Embracer have kept him and his close collaborators Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens in the loop every step of the way. So as of yet, it seems like they're trying to correct some of the mistakes uh, that the Rings of Power did. The fact that Peter Jackson is going to be involved at least gives me hope that they're going to keep the general vision uh, of, you know, his, his adaptations in these new films, which is something I think a lot of fans want to see. Now, we do know that The War of the Rohirrim, uh, upcoming anime fantasy film directed by Kenji Kamiyama, is going to tie in with the existing world of the Peter Jackson adaptations. This is adapting a story found in Appendix A of The Lord of the Rings, and it tells the story of Helm Hammerhand, a legendary king of Rohan who must defend against an army of Dunlindings. 
They're even bringing in some of the key players from the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, like writer Philippa Boyens, who's going to be the executive producer of The War of the Rohirrim. Her daughter, Phoebe Gittins, is also going to be one of the writers. Now, she doesn't really have anything noteworthy uh, to mention, so that could be a little bit worrisome. I don't know. A number of people who worked on the original Jackson movies are going to be involved with this, which is pretty exciting, including Richard Taylor, who won Oscars for makeup and visual effects for the movie, Movies, and Alan Lee, who won an Oscar for art direction for the movies, and Miranda Otto narrating as Eowyn is confirmed. So it is expected to look, feel, and sound quite a bit like the Jackson movies. Now anyways, back to the Warner Brothers films that are being adapted. Uh, let's talk about some speculation as to what stories these could be covering. I think there is a lot of potential in the appendices of The Lord of the Rings. The Angmar War. This is a very deep vein to mine, and I think it would be absolutely perfect. This is such an interesting story crafted by Tolkien, and there is plenty of material to work with. This is the one that probably has been talked about and theorized the most ever since this news has dropped. Now if you don't know, the Angmar War was a centuries-long struggle between the men of Arnor and the forces of Angmar, which were led by the Witch King. Here we would see the fall of Cardolan, a landmark event in the destruction of the Northern Kingdoms at the hands of the Witch King. And you might remember the Barrow Downs from the first book, when Frodo and company find themselves at the mercy of a Barrow White. Well, fun little detail, this was actually the ruins of Cardolan. We'd also witness the alliance between Arnor and Gondor, the fall of the North Kingdom, we'd see hobbits send troops to the Battle of Fornost, and the eventual defeat of Angmar. At one point, the Witch King even attacks Rivendell, so we would see the return of Elrond. Also, this would be a great time to bring in the debut of Glorfindel, one of the mightiest elves in Middle-earth. I'd imagine we'd also see Galadriel and her husband Celeborn, since they send reinforcements from Lothlorien. Like I said, there's so much dramatic content to work with when it comes to the Angmar War, I'm really hoping this is what is going to be adapted. Next there is the War in the North. The War in the North could be incredible as well, and it's one of the few times where a deus ex machina would actually be satisfying, and the ending would even further deepen the impact of Frodo and Sam's actions in the film universe. Now this would tie in really well with Peter Jackson's films because it's in the same timeline to The Lord of the Rings. We'd see a lot of the familiar locations and key characters like Galadriel, Celeborn, Dane, Ironfoot, and Thranduil, who could all return to play their roles. Basically, to summarize, Sauron's primary strategic objective was to use his forces in his second base of operations at Dol Guldur in southern Mirkwood to defeat the elven realm of Lothlorien, then pass over the Misty Mountains to take Rivendell and Eriador. However, Dol Guldur also had to deal with the threat of the elven woodland realm of Thranduil, and thus was forced to split the orc forces. And also Dale and Erebor are besieged by Easterlings. There's a lot of content to cover in this as well. There was even a video game called War in the North, which was actually pretty great, especially when it came to playing co-op. And then, of course, there's the possibility of young Aragorn. Years ago, this was actually one of the ideas pitched as an Amazon series. Obviously, they'd have to recast Aragorn for a younger version, but here we would dive into his childhood. At only two years old, Aragorn was brought to Rivendell to be raised by Elrond, after his father is shot in the eye by an orc. Elrond raises him as his own son, but gives him the name Estel, and keeps his true identity a secret, as he could be vulnerable to the enemy. Estel, or Aragorn, accompanies Elrond's sons on their journeys, and he falls in love with Arwen, and then later at age 16, he takes up his proper name, Aragorn, and starts life as a ranger by venturing into the wild. We see him go on many of his own journeys to Rohan and Gondor. There's a lot of interesting stuff to cover in his life as well. Now, if they wanted to relate these movies to the upcoming Return to Moria video game, they could adapt the story of Durin the Seventh who rallies the dwarves to reclaim Moria, which actually takes place after The Lord of the Rings. I would actually love to see a movie that focuses more so on the dwarves. Anyways, there's so much more that could be adapted. The War of the Dwarves and Orcs, the origins of Rohan. Let me know any others that you can think of, but keep in mind, they don't have any rights to the story of Finrod or the story of Beren and Luthien. Otherwise, I definitely would have mentioned those because I would love to see those on the screen. Well, like anything, if they honor Tolkien's vision. 
But whatever story they end up going with, I do think if anyone can do Middle-Earth justice in adaptation, it's Warner Brothers and New Line. I also think it would be really cool if they continue making animated movies with Peter Jackson's style, or aesthetic, whatever you want to call it. They could even keep most of the original cast to do the voices, so there's continuity with the movies. Now I am feeling a bit more excited for these films, I'm hoping it's not going to end up like Rings of Power. I feel like it's all about respecting and honoring Tolkien's vision for the world he created. If they can manage that, people are going to love it, whether they're fans of the books or not. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about these upcoming new Lord of the Rings films? Are you excited? Are you jaded by Rings of Power? Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know your speculation uh, for what stories you think it's going to be adapting. I would love to hear from you guys. Anyways, that is it. I'll see you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of my patrons who make these videos possible.